Next, we want to talk about blood typing. Now, I'll give you a little history about this. Uh, back in the old days, actually, uh, medicine was first starting, basically science was, they decided that diseases and such were actually because of uh, bad stuff accumulating in your body and your blood and such. And so what they decided to do was try to remove that bad stuff. So that what, that's what led to bloodletting. Now, if at the time you had your wits about you and you knew anything, when they decided, oh, we need to try some bloodletting, you would tell them, no, no, please don't stop. Because a lot of times patients die because not only with the bad stuff in your blood that's causing the disease or the poisoning and such, they would also take out, of course, the good stuff that was keeping you alive. And a lot of times their conclusion after you died was either uh, that they didn't take out enough or they didn't do it fast enough, soon enough. And so they started doing it sooner and sooner and taking out more and more and most of the patients actually died from the bloodletting rather than disease. As science became better, I think it was some 600 and some B, um, AD was when they did the first blood transfusion. They found the chemical that keeps blood from clotting and so they could actually transfer it from one person to another. Not six, uh, 1600, 1600 some. And so uh, again where they thought well rather than taking out the bad stuff maybe we should give you more of the good stuff. So they would do blood transfusions. But again if you knew anything about it you would tell them no no don't don't do it because not only transfer good stuff but also they can transfer bad stuff as how they did the blood transfusion they would go in and just ask a room full of people okay somebody needs blood who wants to donate and somebody would say okay I will and they say well how do you feel I feel fine they might be carrying a serious infection and now they put their blood into the sick persons and they actually can make them sicker. Or of course most people died and again their conclusion was we either didn't do it enough, we should do more blood transfusion or we should have done it sooner. Upon some autopsies they found out that the blood was actually coagulated. It was now no longer liquid blood, it was this uh, long stringy stuff that was weird and it really wasn't until somewhat recent history that somebody had actually had the bright idea that maybe there are different types of blood because you know it all looks the same so somebody actually came with the bright idea that maybe we should take a drop of the patient's blood a drop of the person's blood is going to donate and mix them together on the same glass plate to see if they're actually a good mix before we give them to the patient and so the first basic type of blood typing was determined. Found out, of course, remember those antigen codes, proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Proteins making up most of this. There are protein factors that, of course, G are inherited in your DNA from your parents. One is called type A protein. And so you make a type A antigen. Now these people will not see a type B. Genetically, if they get it from both parents, they're AA. They only get it from one parent, they're AO. O is a null gene, doesn't produce a protein. As long as they have one of those genes, they will produce the protein and have it on the surface of the red blood cell. They're not used to seeing the other one called type B, and so they will make antibodies and they will reject blood that has type B protein on it. Because of that, they can give the other type a people because of course it's the same and they can give to type a b people because they're used to seeing the a and they can get blood from type a because the same or from type o because type o as i said null gene has no markers to reject type b people these are the ones from their parents they inherited the b gene and so they produce the b antigen Either they inherited maybe from both parents, BB, or if they only inherited from one, they inherited BO. And so one B gene, one O gene. As long as you have one, you produce the antigen. They're not used to seeing the type A. And so they produce antibodies against type A and they will reject any blood that has type A in it. They can give two type Bs because again, the same, same. 
They can give the type AB because they're used to seeing the B protein. They can only get from Bs, same, same. Or from Os, they have nothing to reject. Type AB will have one of both genes and therefore antigens. And so they have both proteins on the surface. So they don't have any antibodies. They're used to seeing both of them. Now these can give to other type ABs, but since they don't have any antibodies against anything, they can receive from not only type AB, it's the same, but type A, because they that's the same as they have, type B, because that's what they have. And remember, type O doesn't have anything to reject. So what we often, or at least at first, call the universal recipient. These lucky people can get blood from anybody. Now type O though, they inherited null genes from both parents. So technically or genotypically they're what we call OOs. Uh, they have no antigen on the surface, no additional blood antigen. And so they produce antibodies against both. Because of this, they have nothing to reject so they can give to any blood type. Not only their own, but A's and B's and AB's, but they can only get from their own type O. Now this was determined at first and eliminated most of the rejection, but there was still some rejection going on. So they knew there was some other gene involved, some other protein, and they finally did find it. And doing research on monkey blood, on the rhesus monkey, they found a blood protein. And they then checked humans and found out that's our other blood protein. And so at first it was called the RH factor. You have it or you don't. So basically it's positive or it's negative. A lot of people did not like uh, this being called the RH factor after a rhesus monkey because of course it's origin. So they now refer to it as either just plus and minus or type D protein. This is a different location on the genetics. So this is an addition to the ABO blood system. So a positive person has this protein, no antibodies. Uh, they can give the other positive people and they can receive blood from both because they have no antibodies against it. A negative person is basically negative negative. A positive person is positive positive or positive negative as long as they have one of the factors they produce the protein. But a negative person has to receive null genes from both parents. So they don't have the protein so they have an antibody against the protein and so they can only give, well they can give the both but they only get from another negative person. We put these together, the universal recipient now, of course, is AB positive. If they have all the markers, so no antibodies. And so they do not reject any blood. These lucky people can get blood from anybody. Uh, the universal donor now, of course, is a, an O negative. They have no markers, so they have nothing to reject. And that's why, if you don't know, somebody comes in the emergency room, they've been in an accident, they need units of blood, they will give them automatically O negative. They will send their blood sample to the lab and they will not run it once, not twice. Three times in a row they get the same results like A positive, A positive, A positive. Then they'll contact the emergency room and say your patient's A positive because they have to be very certain about this and so they can take them off the O negative and save that for the next person that needs it and of course they can use something else like A positive, or at least something that they will not reject. Uh, in the United States, O positive is the most abundant blood type. A positive right behind them, that's my people. Um, o negative, AB positive, AB negative, those are the rarest types. Uh, and unfortunately O negative is, and a lot of people cannot give because of possible diseases. If they're carrying major diseases, you do not want to transfer their blood, as we mentioned before. But if you happen to have O negative, you are hounded by the blood banks. Every so often, you know, once you're able to donate again, oh, please come and donate again. Uh, they treat those people very nicely. I've seen before, I give blood regularly, and uh, the old days I was in there, and I was giving blood, and you get your orange juice and your donut for sugar and vitamin C to help replace the blood after you donate. 
these other people were taken to a separate room and there was a nice color TV in there. They had sandwiches, cookies, tea, Cokes. I mean, there's about everything. And that was their break room. Now they treat everybody equally nice. But also the lady at the reception desk was making phone calls and she finally got a hold of somebody and how are you, Mr. Jones? Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Do you know it's been 45 days since your last blood donation, so you're eligible again? Can you come in today? Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your car. Can we send our van to go pick you up? Yes, we have hoagies today. They were at a mall, and so they, yes, you can go shopping when you want to come. As long as you come back before 5 o'clock, we'll take you home. Okay, when well, should we pick you up? And then she went to call in the next person. But she was calling all the O negatives. And you hear all the time, when, especially around the holidays, okay? We're short on A positive and O negative. We're short on O positive, A positive, and O negative. Usually O negative is always on that list, and that's why. 